Now we're going to talk about assessing alkenes for stability. And this is going to be incredibly important later in the semester when we predict products of reactions. And again in Organic 2 when we have alkenes involved in reactions or as the products of reactions, you can often predict the major product by picking the alkene that's going to be more stable. There's a couple of guiding principles to use when determining alkene stability. The first is that stability increases as the number of alkyl groups on the double bond increases. This is just increasing substitution increases stability. And this is a form of hyperconjugation like you learned about with carbocations. The second thing, for disubstituted alkenes, trans alkenes are more stable than cis. And that's a steric issue. Trans puts the groups further apart, that makes them happier. Cis, they're closer together. So let's look at a series of alkenes with increasing substitution. And in this list, we're increasing stability. So we start down here with no groups attached, and then we're adding the number of carbon groups as you go from left to right. Now remember that every alkene is going to have four total things attached. But in this first one, the four things that are attached are just hydrogens. And you can draw those in. When we talk about substitution on an alkene, don't include hydrogens. So for this first one, since all four things on that alkene are hydrogen, we would just say that this alkene is unsubstituted. In the second one, if we want, we can draw in the hydrogens. So three of the things attached are hydrogens, but the fourth thing right here is a carbon. That's one group, we call that monosubstituted. In the next one, we have two things attached to the alkene. The other two things are hydrogens. I'm not going to draw them in this time. So this is disubstituted. But in this case, the two substituents are on the same side, so that is cis. In the next one, it's also disubstituted. There's two things attached, but now it's trans. And we know that trans is a bit more stable than cis. The next one we have now one, two, three non-hydrogen substituents. So this we would say is tri-substituted. And then at the top of our list, one, two, three, four substituents, that is tetra-substituted. In this example, we're given three alkene isomers, and we want to rank them in terms of stability. So the first thing that you might want to start with if you're still getting used to doing this is drawing in the hydrogen such that every alkene has four total bonds. So that's what I'm going to do first. In this first one I need a hydrogen here, here, and here. Now that alkene has four bonds total. The second one I need a hydrogen here, and the third one here and here. The next thing that you want to do is 
count the number of carbons attached to each double bond. And then remember, 1 is mono substituted, 2 is di substituted, 3 is tri substituted, and 4 is tetra substituted. In our first compound, if you look at the double bond, there's just one carbon attached to the double bond right there. So this would be a mono substituted alkene. In our second one, we have a carbon attached here, here, and here. Three carbons attached, that's going to be tri substituted. And then in our third compound, we have a carbon attached here and here. This one is di substituted. So now just rank these stability wise based on the substitution. The tri substituted is the most stable, so we'll say that's one, followed by the di substituted is number two. And the mono substituted is three, the least stable.